Good morning. Happy Easter morning, everyone. So glad that you're here on this beautiful Sunday spring morning. Here or at home, or wherever you may be watching us, listening to us live or on social media. We're going to start right now with our opening chant, God is all there is. Welcome and good morning. We are delighted that you joined us here in person, love that, and via Facebook and Zoom. Uh, for those of, that are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phone. We thank you so much for that. So let us just join in prayer, quietly turning our consciousness inside, just enjoying the bliss of being here, the gorgeousness of the day and acknowledging the divine presence of God that is always with us, that which is the love intelligence that governs the universe, that is everywhere present, that has created us to be as and who we are. God loves us as we are and as we are not. God is our creator, our divine intelligence, our divine sense of being and purpose in life. And I know that we are all here as emissaries of God, here to do what it is we agreed to come to on this earth plane. And there is no separation. There is not a spot where God is not. And knowing this, that in all circumstances, God is there guiding me, encouraging me, letting me know what is the perfect right action for me and my life. I know this is true for me, and I know this is true for everyone here present. And I am so grateful for being here in this church to the Church of Religious Science for the teachings of science of mine that just brings me joy and bliss and a greater understanding and a deep appreciation of the godness, the godness I am and the godness that you are. I am grateful for the musicians that are here today, for our Zoom team, for our office staff, for those who care for our children and those who care for our grounds and the board that has kept us afloat for all this time. And I am most certainly grateful for those who are here present in the sanctuary and those that join us via virtual means. And knowing this, appreciating and loving this, I say thank you, God, for this day. And I know that I just, with loving kindness, I release this word into the law of mine where it's made manifest eloquently as God is. And so it is. And together we simply say, Amen. Amen. Ever present and more constant than the sun. 
please stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. We get to sing. Please join us as we sing Christ in us is risen today, led by the wonderful Kevin McMahon. Yeah. Join in meditation. Please, you're already seated. Okay. We're going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to just simply close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra God is the love that I am. I am the love that God is. If your mind wanders, please know this is totally natural. And just gently bring it back to your consciousness and to your breath. By concentrating on your breath, we simply breathe in the now. And just simply breathe in and breathe out. And repeat, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. And I'll bring us out in five minutes.
When lonely feelings chill the meadows of your mind, just think when winter comes, can spring be far behind? Beneath the deepest snow, the secret of a rose is that it merely knows you must believe in spring. Just as the tree is sure, its leaves will reappear. It knows its emptiness is just the time of year. The golden mountain stream of April's melting dreams. How quickly clear it seems you must believe in spring. Must believe in love and trust it's on its way. Just as a sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May. So in a world of snow, of things that come and go, where what you think you know, you can't be certain of. Must believe in spring and believe in love and trust it's on its way just as the sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May so in a world of snow of things that come and go where what you Good morning. Thank you for being here. Happy Easter to you. So I will say that Easter is absolutely my, my favorite holiday. It always has been. Um, on Friday night, we had here our really good Friday service with our ministerial student, Carrie Herrera, and our Prac 2 class and wonderful Reverend Sidney. And then we had a dinner that I called, What Would Jesus Eat? And, uh, and you know, I think Jesus had a good consciousness, so he ate pretty well. And so if you came to that, I thank you for being with us. We had a wonderful night. We had a really, really fun night. So some years back, um, I was in Israel, and um, I went to all the holy Jesus spots. And, uh, and it was great. It was really, really wonderful. Things that I'd read about and heard about and seen pictures of my whole life, I was actually at these places. Now, it's interesting, in Jerusalem, um, you know, different religions do not agree on things. Can you imagine? How is that possible? But in Jerusalem, there are um, four groups around Christian teaching that sort of share the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So there are uh, the... Uh, Catholics and the Greek Orthodox and the Armenians and the Ethiopians. And so they each have different hours that parts of the place belong to them and share. So it's really, it's really quite fascinating. But um, 
in Jerusalem is this church of the Holy Sepulchre, the church of the tomb where Jesus was laid after the crucifixion. This, now, why I brought up those four groups is, you know, they don't agree on anything. They really don't agree on anything. But there are a few things in Jerusalem that they all agree upon. And so we know how powerful an agreement is when we have shared agreement. And so, um, you know, was this actually the tomb that Jesus was laid in? I don't know. I mean, I really, I, I don't know. But, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but all of these groups agree that it was. Just like where Golgotha is, the, the place of the skull where Jesus was crucified, they all agree on that exact spot, which is amazing because they don't agree on anything. And where he was born in Bethlehem, they all agree on that spot, and they don't agree on anything. So I think that's a pretty amazing thing that there's some agreement about that. Um, you know, when people come to our church here, often for oh, a baby blessing or a wedding, sometimes a funeral, uh, people will come in and they'll look around because you'll notice we don't quite look exactly like other churches uh, in some ways, and they'll look and they'll see pictures of Jesus and Buddha and Mary and Krishna and people worshiping in a mosque and the Beatles in Rishikesh. <laughs> and, and on more than one occasion, I've heard people say, what kind of a church is this? What kind of a church is this? And so let me explain that why we have so many things represented in our sanctuary is that in the science of mind, we teach that there are so many paths to God because God is the only place to go. You know, so the important thing is that we find a path, get on the path, and stick with the path. And if, in fact, we do that, we will actually make progress spiritually. Now, how long have I been talking? Two minutes? Okay, it's time to get on thin ice. Uh, <laughs> I would say, this is my observation, is that at this time, you know, um, a, a, I don't know, a month or so ago, we did um, the funeral for one of our practitioners, Dolores Cardellucci, a wonderful woman who was at this church when I got here decades ago. And at her uh, service, uh, someone shared a quote from Dolores. And Dolores used to say, I'm not spiritual, I'm religious. And you know, it's very popular in this time that we are living in for people to say that they are spiritual, right? Now, I've thought about that and thought about that and thought about that, and I'm kind of agreeing with Dolores. I think I'm also religious. And what I mean by that is I follow the teaching of the science of mind. I really try to practice this teaching. This is my path, uh, my spiritual journey in life, is this, this teaching right here. <laughs> And I, and I absolutely love that it is. But what I observe is that people will be on a path, and at some point they'll be asked to do something they don't like to do. Perhaps heal a relationship, or uncover the cause of some troubling effect in their life. They might have to forgive somebody. They might have to pay somebody back. And people then say, thank you very much. I'm looking for a new church. Right? That's what, and, no, think about this, right? Because we don't want to have to do, I mean, it's, it's, it's human nature. Especially now, as consciousness evolves more and more, we don't want to do what we don't want to do. But I think we also know, and certainly that higher self, the spirit of God within us, knows if this is the work we're supposed to do. So for me, long ago, so the first time I had an appointment with a licensed practitioner, there's this wonderful woman. I really admired her tremendously. And so I thought, I'm going to go to her. I'm going to go see her because I like her consciousness. I want to be like her. And I went to this beautiful home in Beverly Hills. This, I remember it was a Spanish uh, building, a Spanish house, and that big curved window in the front. And we sat in these two really elegant chairs in that front window, uh, these beautiful antique chairs. You had a little table there with a crystal pitcher of water, you know. And we're talking. And I was telling her all this spiritual stuff I did. I said, well, I've been listening to these different channelers. And I go to this meeting. And I go to that meeting. And over here, we're you know, dancing under the light of the moon. And I'm doing this. And I'm doing that. And I'm rebirthing. And I'm this and that. And all this stuff. And I thought she was going to say, well, you are very evolved. And then and she waited. And she said, is that it? And I said, yeah. And she went, you, young man, are a mess. And I was really troubled by that because I thought, like, you know, hey, I'm on the path. You know, I'm having my beads squeezed and my cards read and everything, everything, my aura's buffed. What could I be missing here? 
And she said to me, she said, you were so spread out. You were so interested in everything. It was an early version of shiny object syndrome. I realize that now. Is that she said to me, she says, you don't know what you believe. Because everything is of interest to you. She said, it doesn't matter to me, but you need to pick a path and stay with that path religiously for two years. And if at the end of two years, you're certain it's not your path, well, then certainly choose something else. She said, but you don't know what your path is because you haven't stuck to anything. You're just saying yes to everything that catches your eye. And she was absolutely right. And I was really annoyed. I was just really annoyed because here I was thinking that I am really spiritual, you know? And well, and I guess I was, but I wasn't really making progress. I was just having a really interesting investigation of everything that the Bodhi tree had to offer. Yeah, which was a lot. The Bodhi tree was, was vast back in the old days. You know, in the 80s, the Bodhi tree was vast. So I think that um, Easter, spring, Passover, is one of the spiritual themes that we live through again and again in our life's journey. You know, that there is birth, there will be crucifixion, there is death, but there will be resurrection, right? And, and that's very, very encouraging. So think of it this way. It's an energy pattern, you know, that things start, they have life, they die away, and they resurrect again, right? So following the crucifixion, and I know we all have had and are having crucifixion experiences, there is three days in the tomb, right? So we've had crucifixion, and then there's that period of time, three days, three months, three years, whatever. It could be any amount of time before we actually resurrect. Now, we teach, when we talk about the Bible here, that all of the stories of the Bible take place within us, within our lifetime. They are things that happen on our spiritual journey as we come closer, as we come home to God. So the Bible stories are all happening within us. And people say, did this really happen? Did Easter happen as we talk about it 2,000 years ago? I don't know, and it doesn't really matter to me. And this is why. Just because something didn't happen doesn't mean it isn't true. You know, just because it didn't happen doesn't mean it isn't so. At Easter, I like to remember how when I was a kid back east, um, we had lots of caterpillars. Uh, lots and lots of caterpillars. So think about a caterpillar, and here you are, maybe you're a caterpillar, and you're just living your life, just going along, living your life, munching leaves, life is good, you know, but at some point, this caterpillar knows instinctively to build itself a cocoon, okay? And now, once that cocoon is built, that caterpillar's old life is over. And during that time in the cocoon, what happens to the caterpillar is the caterpillar dissolves and turns into goo. There is no more caterpillar left. The caterpillar's old life ceases to exist. And from that goo, a butterfly will emerge. So my dear friend from this church who passed a year ago, Taryn McEwen, she would say to me, I'd say, Taryn, how you doing? And she'd say, ah, Dr. Mark, right now I'm goo. Right now I'm goo. <laughs> You know, uh, we were talking on the phone or something. I said, oh, how's things going? She said, I'm in the goo. I'm in the goo. And it's like, okay, I understand. I understand. You know where, you know one thing has ended and the new thing has not emerged and we're sort of in that middle place where we just feel like goo. Yeah, just sort of like goo. I, I understand. I have been goo for the past two years. I don't know about you, but I've been goo. You know, but I know I know that I will resurrect. So let's talk about your resurrection and my resurrection right now. See, I'm confident that there are places in your life, because there are places in my life, and I know we're not that different, where you are in the tomb, right? Where, yep, an old life is over and the new life is not here yet, and you have no idea what that next step, what that next incarnation here is going to be. So I used to think that this time in the tomb was kind of a waste. It's like, God, I'm in the tomb. You know, I wish we could just like roll away that stone. Let's get going here, you know. But now I realize that that time in the tomb is really time for us to be preparing our consciousness so that we get the most out of our resurrection. 
right? That there's a new life in here. So Rudolf Steiner, uh, who I'm a big fan of, says that at the crucifixion, which he refers to as the Golgotha event, he said that, so first of all, God's love was always surrounding the earth, right? But when Jesus was crucified, Steiner says that his blood hit the earth, and in that moment, God's love could enter into the consciousness of humanity in a fuller and greater way than it ever had before. And what this meant was now people could experience heaven on earth. See, up until this point, people had to die for their situation to get better. Right? How many times do we say when somebody has been in horrific pain and they passed on, we say, well, at least their suffering is over. Thank God they're out of pain. Thank God they're not suffering anymore. So Steiner says what happened at the crucifixion was because God's love could enter into the consciousness of humanity in so much of a greater way than it ever had before, people could now experience heaven on earth. They didn't have to die to get there. Right? Because remember, not that long, just go back a few generations, life was very difficult for people. Life was really, really difficult. You know when you watch those series on TV like about Henry VIII? You know, and, and you see people back hundreds of years ago. First of all, we have to remember, people didn't live that long. And life was really, really hard. I mean, if you got sick with anything, pretty much it was going to take you out of the game. Pretty much anything. Splinter, oh, I'm sorry. We'll come to your service. You know, you got a cough, it's probably tur tuberculosis or consumption or something. You know, people didn't live very long and life was very hard. But because they had the teaching of the church, the church said, don't worry, when you die, you're going to be in a place where the roads are paved with gold and there are pearly gates and you will have no problems. Now, that's very attractive, isn't it? No problems? That sounds great. I like it. Sign me up. I want a front row seat. But the problem was you had to die to get there. You had to die to get there because people believed that life was about toiling and struggling and suffering. And it wasn't until you died that things got good. I remember as a kid hearing the teaching about heaven. And, uh, and I said, um, I remember saying to my Sunday school teacher, but in heaven, we won't have to eat peas and carrots, will we? <laughs> Little kid, right? And the Sunday school teacher, um, it was funny because she went to school with my sister, um, said, well, actually, you will, but the difference is in heaven, you like them. <laughs> that, didn't sound, that didn't sound that good to me. It really didn't. That was, that was not like a big drawing card. Uh, so this is what, and, and now this is, this is very, very relevant to what we teach in New Thought because we, te we focus in New Thought on the statements of Jesus that the kingdom of heaven is within you and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Jesus is introducing into the consciousness of humanity, look, heaven is going to be available here. Heaven is available here. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to struggle with things. You can be lifted above conditions while you are here still on earth. Right? So this, this is a big move, for, big move forward in consciousness that we don't have to die for things to get better. So what happened, again, is in this moment, heaven came to earth. And for us, what this means is that healing is possible here. Here, now, in this life, you don't have to die for things to get better, which is thrilling for me. Because Ernest Holmes said that Jesus was the great example, not the great example. What am I trying to say here? You know, it's early in the morning for me. That Jesus was a model for what we might become. He's the example of what we be might become, not the exception that everybody thought he was. See, if, if, if Jesus is the exception to the rule, then there's nothing relevant there for us, right? There's nothing there to help us. But if Jesus is the example saying, hey, I did this, you can do this too. You can resurrect over the conditions that are in your life that are challenging for you. You can lift above that. Right? So use this time in the tomb. So what's the time in the tomb about? I think the time in the tomb is for us to forgive. Oh, forgive, 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 forgive. And be grateful, 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 grateful. Time for us to pray. Time for us to meditate. Time for us to affirm. Time for us to take stock of our existence and our life and say, you know, where have I been holding on that it's time to let go? Where have I not been grateful? Where am I not being forgiving? Because all of this, you know, we think I can be you know, loving over here, but over here I don't have to be. I can be giving over here, but over here I don't have to be. But you know, the principle that we're working with is that it's a principle of one life. 
You know, there is only one life. This life is God. This life is perfect, and this life is my life now. That's what Ernest Holmes teaches us. So there's only one life, and how you are in consciousness in this area of life absolutely affects how we are in another area of life because it's all the same consciousness. So where do you need to have resurrection in your life right now today? You know, there's probably an area. I suspect for all of us at least one. Right? So I'm in the tomb. What am I doing in the tomb? You know, this is just like the tomb is actually not that different. I'll probably get in trouble for this, but it's okay. Then, then like when there's, when there's a strike in the entertainment industry. You know, when there's a strike in the entertainment industry, for, for all intents and purposes, most people are in the tomb. Nothing's happening. No work is happening. Right? But eventually the strike will end, and people will go back to work. But not everybody will go back to work. Who will go back to work? The people who've made the most of their time in the tomb. The people who've continued to lift their consciousness and speak their word, speak the word of truth for themselves, for their industry, right? Because they will be prepared consciousness. It's not like, ah, we're in strike. I'm just going to set my consciousness aside. I'll pick up being conscious when the strike is over. That's not how it works. That's absolutely not how it works, that we have to be lifting our consciousness up all the time. You know, the Last Supper was, was a Passover Seder, you know? And, and, and yes, you know, I... I love the science of mind teaching, but, but I want you to know, I know that all teachings contain some of the truth. Right? I, don't think, I don't think any one teaching contains all of it. Why? Because I think God is too big to be contained in one teaching. Right? Because we say that God is infinite. God is infinite. So it is my um, goal that we would work with this teaching, work with these principles, uh, because I think they're incredibly practical. You know, so our teaching around Jesus, okay, it says Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, and so are you. Okay, so people are kind of uh, taken aback by that, yes, so are you. But we say what Jesus had, you also have. He just didn't have the extra stuff that we accumulate along the way. You know what I mean? He just didn't have that little black bag of things that he carried around with him. You know, you don't see a black bag hanging from the cross, do you? No, you never do, right? So we see Jesus, first of all, as a principle. What's the principle? The principle is the principle of manifest God I am. When Moses saw the burning bush, and God spoke to him through the burning bush in the Old Testament, that same light that was the burning bush is the light that, that, that is in the principal power and presence of Jesus, right? So Jesus was a principle, the principle of manifest God I am. Jesus was a power. What's that power? The power to take your time in the tomb and use it so that you will resurrect into a new life, that your caterpillar doesn't just remain goo on the branch, right? That you actually get to become a butterfly. We have that power and the presence. You know, that presence is the truth about each and every one of us, that we are emanations, we are spiritual beings in that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Everyone is in every tradition and no tradition. Everyone, I believe, belongs to God. Even, even the people who don't believe in God belong to God, right? And God's like, yeah, 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 we'll gather everybody in. We gather everybody in. Um, so this is the idea of Easter, crucifixion, time in the tomb, resurrection. Um, these are universal themes that I think pretty much show up in different traditions. And what Ernest Holmes did is Ernest Holmes took from all of them. Ernest Holmes took a thread from everybody and twisted them together and said, this, this is the science of mind. So the story doesn't change. You know, in the science of mind teaching, it's always that we pray for us to change, right? It's never to let me make conditions out here be different. It's let me be different in here because we know that what's happening out here in the outer world is a reflection of what's happening in our consciousness in here, right? So the story, in that sense, the story doesn't change, you know? Metaphysically, um, it's all happening in us, and it's all happening right now. Um, if, we, if we receive the message in the story, I believe that we will be transformed. We have everything at our disposal to lift up above any error condition, right? You know, I think there are... Um, more crucifixions now, probably. You know, I thought we had crucifixions before COVID. 
But now it's like, oh my God, there are, there are whole new levels of crucifixion that we experience, you know, where, where we feel really just cut off at the knees. Um, you know, so going back, we see that in the Old Testament, Moses escaped slavery, right? He, like the Buddha, he was raised in a palace. He was surrounded by privilege. But his heart led him to recognize the suffering of his people. You know, he sees a slave master who, who um, beats an Israelite, and, and Moses goes and kills the slave master. And then he's got to run out of town, right? Uh, but, but this is good. See, as awful as that situation looks, right? right? He's killed somebody, so he's got to get out of Dodge. It's then that he really starts on the next phase of his spiritual journey. You know, he runs, he gets married, he's a shepherd, and he encounters the burning bush, right? And the bush is not consumed. So Moses knows he has to help his people. Mm -hmm. Now, we all have what it takes, you know, even though we might be like Moses and think, who me? Who me? But, you know, God rebukes Moses. And it's like, don't doubt God. So how do I not doubt God? You know, well, the way God gives to us is God gives to us through the realm of ideas. Divine ideas come to us about what we might do, what we might be, what we might experience, what we might have. Um, the, the way God gives is God gives us an idea, right? And our job, I believe, is to say yes to it, to embrace it, to say, you know, God gave me this idea for a reason. I'm supposed to do something with it. So I think that, you know, the, the miracles that we seek, the healings are born of, of conviction, you know, conviction that God in the midst of me, in the midst of my life is mighty. God in us is really, really mighty. And God in us is greater than the conditions that we face. So, you know, for you, I don't know what error condition you need to be resurrected from. But if you would join with me in agreement that we are in the process of being resurrected right now, only good will come from this. I am certain only good will come from this. So if you would join me in prayer now, let's turn our attention inward for a moment, remembering that right here where we are, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded, we are filled with God's spirit, God's light, God's love, God's very presence within and around and through each of us is the most true, real thing about us. That yes, we are the sons and daughters of the most high God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other in the mind and in the heart that is God. We are all one. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and with each other, I speak the word for us today that we are open, willing, receptive vessels for resurrection. That yes, we've experienced plenty of crucifixion in our life and whatever area, whatever part of our life could be resurrected, we are willing, we are open, we say yes to it. Because through the power of God and the love of God and the goodness of God, I know for each and every one of us, resurrection is absolutely available. Because I know that God's love has come into the consciousness of humanity in a greater way than ever before. And that we are transformed, we are changed at depth. So we're saying goodbye to caterpillar life and we might even be in the goo right now. And that's okay, if you find yourself in goo, know that it's just a matter of time before you transform into your next great expression. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of our loved ones. We see them in our mind's eye. And we surround them with light and love and healing and thoughts of every good and perfect thing. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in. So what pulls at our attention, what makes us fearful, where we see not harmony, where we see signs of war, we say right there, the light of God is. How can the light of God be there? Because we put it there. We know it's there. Our intention is for that light of God to express as peace and harmony and order and well-being for all people on the face of the earth. So see from your heart to all other hearts a connection. And that connection is only love and blessing and goodwill toward all people everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, and I know we're blessed by being together today. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is so, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. 
All right, we'll sing one time together. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. My soul so weary when trouble comes and my heart burden be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up Stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shoulder You raise me up To more than I can be There is no life no life without its hunger Each precious heart beats so impatiently But when you come and I am filled with wonder Sometimes it feels I've touched eternity You raise me up I can stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shoulder You raise me up To more than I can be I 
I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up to all that I can be. You raise me up to all that I can be. Beautiful, Kevin. Now, how fabulous is that? We get to I got to hear Kevin, I think it was the Mark Taper perform, and we get to hear him in a private performance here at church. And you may take some of Kevin home with you. His music is on iTunes. That would be fun. Okay. And we got to practice a little good this morning. I mean, you know, Mark, Dr. Mark speaks and God demonstrates. So, okay, let's see what's going on here at church. If this is your first time here, we are delighted that you are here. Please stop by the welcome table and on the patio and pick up a packet of information prepared especially for you. For all the ways you can make donations to our church, go to nhc.org forward slash give, and you can text the word give to 818-457-3419 or use the QR code. This is so cute. It's now on the back over here of your little our little um, bulletin, and you can just uh, donate money that way as well. And prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. And I encourage you to partake of that. It's really nice. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Uh, meditation will begin at 6.50 p.m. and service at 7. Please join Reverend Sidney this week when her topic will be resurrected. Now what? <laughs> and if you missed the Friday night service, it was Fabulous. Our practitioner students, they're just so wonderful. And you can uh, rewatch that on Facebook. And we had a fabulous time eating and congregating and conversation. It was just wonderful. So when you feel comfortable, we invite you to come back here and get some hugs and some good times. We are calling all kids and friends. This will be an Easter egg hunt for our youth um, on the church lawn immediately following the service. And we have to hustle out there soon. You know, they take about 45 seconds to clear the path. <laughs> so please join in the fun. The Loving Kindness Ministry. Our Loving Kindness Ministry is feeding the homeless today at 1230 at the North Hollywood uh, Park. To support this amazing ministry, please reach out to Gilda Gomez through our website or sign up on the patio. Living a Course in Miracles will be this Thursday, April 21st. This group, facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte, will meet this Thursday from 7.15 to 9.15 on Zoom, and everyone is welcome. The Japan trip with Dr. Mark is October of 2022. This is the lovely flyer. There's only a couple spots left. So if you've never traveled with Dr. Mark, it is a treat and a half. It is, there is so much that you do and things change and you get to know people that you just sort of say hi to and you get to learn so much um, about yourself as well as the country you visit and the traditions that, that are over there. So it's, it's just a, a delightful treat. So he's going to Japan. The Adventure of a Lifetime and information is on the patio, and please don't miss out. If you um, made a Journey of the Heart pledge this year and have not picked up your special gift, please see or contact Doreen in the office. Zoom virtual patio is before and after Sunday and Wednesday services, and Zoom meditation is every Monday through Saturday morning from 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website at NHCA. 
N A C H R S. Thank you. Um, dot org to obtain Zoom and more information about all our events and sign up for our weekly e blast and monthly announcements. Okay, let's stand and sing the peace song. Uh, one more piece of business while we're standing. Please stand, everybody. I'm sorry. Dr. Mark celebrated a birthday yesterday. Yay! Hey, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Mark. Happy birthday to you. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. 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 Thank you. Easter egg hunt. I'll see you on the patio after the Easter egg hunt.